Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Bearded Dev and in this video we're going to be looking at additive case statements. If you are new to the channel and are interested in business intelligence and data analysis, do subscribe, there is lots of great content available and if you do enjoy the video, hit that thumbs up button. In this scenario, uh, we're going to be going through AdventureWorks are having a bike sale. All bikes are 10% off, road bikes are a further 10% off and then any yellow or red road bike is a further 5% off. Uh, so if you purchase a red or yellow road bike, you will receive 25% off. So how we're going to solve this problem is using additive case statements. So we're going to go over to SQL Server Management Studio now and go through some examples. So first of all, I get a lot of comments on the channel asking for the to, to be able to follow along with the video. So in this particular example, I'm using AdventureWorks DW2012. This is a database that's uh, readily available online and it's a database that Microsoft provides for training material. Um, we're going to be focusing our, uh, around products here. So AdventureWorks is a cycle company. They sell bikes as well as accessories and clothing. So there's a couple of main tables we're going to be focusing on. Uh, dim product, dim product category, and dim product subcategory. Uh, so they are within a hierarchy. So each product belongs to a subcategory, and then each subcategory belongs to a category. Uh, so in the world of di dimensional modeling, that is classed as a snowflake schema. Uh, so I'm just going to hide Object Explorer, and we'll go ahead and having have a look at these products categories and subcategories. So I'm just going to start off by writing a select statement. Uh, so we're going to start with our product category table, dim product category, and we'll call that cat, and um, we'll join that to dim subcategory. We'll call that subcat. I'm um, going to join on product category key so that will exist in both dim product category and dim product subcategory. And then we'll be joining to our product table as well, which is the effectively the leaf level, so the lowest level. Uh, so that's where our, our details of the products are actually kept. And we'll just alias that table as prod. Uh, so again, each product will have a product subcategory key. Our products belong to subcategories. Uh, so if we was to have a relation, if we was to th find out what products belong to what category, we'd have to go through that intermediate table of subcategory. Okay, so if we just start off with this query first of all, uh, so we have 397, we can see, I would just return the columns that we're interested in, so from the category table we want the English product category name. From our subcategory we want the English product subcategory name. And from our product table we want the English product name. So I'll just go ahead and execute that so it's more relevant. So we can see in terms of categories we've got components, accessories, clothing and so forth. Subcategories we have uh, frames, helmets, socks, uh, and then our individual actual products, such as uh, the the actual helmet or the actual jersey or the actual bike itself. Um, so as we're going to be focusing on the bikes category, I'm just going to go ahead and add a where clause to this. Uh, so I would like the cat English product category name to equal bikes. So that will filter our data down. So these are all the bikes we're working with. Now there are three subcategories. There are mountain bikes, 
road bikes and touring bikes and hopefully that's that's clear to yourselves on screen so as mentioned in the scenario uh, it's actually the road bikes category that adds a further 10% discount so we'll go ahead and also filter where the subcategory name equals road bikes so this will just give us a clearer picture of how to assemble this query uh, so we've got 65 rows and I'll just take the results grid off screen so we can see this whole query that we've got here so we're joining product category to product subcategory to product uh, we're looking for the English product category name of bikes and the subcategory name of road bikes and then we're returning the product category name the product subcategory name and the English product name as well so we'll go ahead and start assembling our case statement so uh, first of all we're having 10% discount on bikes if you are new to case statements there is a introductory video on my channel I will leave a link in the description so go ahead and check that out so we're going to start with case when a cat which is our alias English product category name equals bikes then we're going to say then 0.1 which is going to represent our 10% discount in decimal format and then we're just going to end okay so then we've got we'll just give that an alias of discount so again I'll just hide the results grid just to make that clear so our case statement here is saying case when our English product category name equals bikes then 0.1 end as discount and we'll go ahead and execute that query now and we've got our discount percentage there notice I haven't got an else there because we're not offering a discount on any other category say if we was offering a discount of 10% on bikes and then in any other category was only offering 5% I could have done that within an else statement there and if you want to look into that again go and check out that other video on my channel now the next situation is when they're looking at road bikes they will also get a further 10% discount so when a customer purchases a road bike they will get a further 10% discount and this is where we start looking at additive case statements so what we're going to do is say plus and then another case statement so case when subcat English product subcategory name equals road bikes then again 0.1 end now you'll notice there that we're they're, they're showing I'll just hold the results grid to make it clearer so we've got red squiggly lines to say we've got some syntax errors and the reason is is because we've got that plus we need to remove that alias from the initial case statement so we're just going to move that down onto our next line change this to the correct name and then we now have this correct so I'm just going to move these onto the next line so I can show it within one screen so what we have there is we're saying case when our product category name is bikes then 0.1 end and then the key here is plus so we're adding case statements and we say in case when our English product subcategory name equals road bikes then 0.1 end as discount so if we go ahead and execute that now we can see within the results grid uh, I know it can be hard to see but we've got that 0.2 there and then if I scroll down and comment out the and 
so we just return the whole product category of bikes you can see we have nulls representing those and then 0 0.2 for road bikes so that brings us on to an important thing so we purposely left out the else statement there and what's going to happen is if we temporarily remove this plus and run this query we will see that we do have I know it's not alias so there's no column name at the moment so we do have 0.1 but then if we put that plus back in and execute the query that value then changes to null because what we're doing within this additive case is we're trying to add 0.1 and then the result of the second case statement which is null which is going to give us a result of null so we do actually have to add that in here to say 0.00 representing 0% and if we go ahead and do that we can see 10% is the correct value for bikes and then if we scroll down to where we've got the road bikes we can see that that's at 0.2% now we're going to take this one step further now so we also need to add in to say when the product is a red or yellow road bike then there will also be a further 5% discount added so again we're going to use an additive case statement here so we're going to say plus or hide the results grid temporarily again we're going to have another case statement I'm going to say prod English product name and because we have a long list of products that would be yellow or red what we're actually going to add in here is a like statement so we're going to say like so we're going to search that text for red and here we're going to add an or because we want to include red or yellow so we're going to say or again we have to write out the column name English product name like again we don't have an easy way to identify our yellow products not in this scenario anyway so I'm just going to drop this onto a line just to make it again simpler to read then 0 0.05 else again we'll have to add the zero and then we'll have to move that alias down as well so the alias should always go against the last statement and we'll just add that there for clarity so now what we're saying is when the product category name is bikes we add 0 0.01 when the subcategory name is road bikes then we add a further 0 0.1 and when the English product name is like red or like yellow then we add a further 0 0.5 so I'm going to just add my and back in it's always better to add in filters initially to work with the subset of data just to make sure everything's correct so we can see here we have a red bike and it's in the road bike category and we have a 0.25 discount applied which is correct so we go through this and we can see we have some black bikes where only not only 20 percent discount has been applied and again that's correct and then what we want to do is expand it to a bigger set of data so that's why we're going to remove the and again so we remove the and again and run the query and we can see this looks okay we've got mountain bikes 10% uh, discount they're in silver and if we scroll through so we've got our road bikes category there we know they're all correct and we're just going to keep going through the results however we do have a problem here so we can see it is a bike so it's correct to have 10% discount applied it's not a road bike but it is yellow and the problem is that's adding a further 5% discount where the scenario was we only wanted to add that further 5% if it was part of the road bikes category so we have a problem there 
um, we need to resolve that issue and how we're going to do that is build on our case statement so we're going to add that as well to our third case statement so we're going to change this to subcat dot english product subcategory name will have to equal road bikes so we have to put that that extra clause in and then we say and just move this onto the next line for clarity so we're saying that in the third case statement we're saying that the product subcategory name has to be road bikes and the English product name is like red or yellow and because we've got an and there and an all we're just going to wrap those in parentheses just to make that a bit clearer for us so I'll just hide the results grid again and we can go through that so for the final case statement we've got our subcategory name equals road bikes and our product is either red or yellow or in this case like and then we'll add a further 0.05% else we'll continue to add zero so let's go ahead and execute that now and we'll see if that's resolved the issue within the touring bikes category so it should only be anything in the road bikes category that is greater than 0.1 and we can see that checking through the results grid that nothing there is greater than 10% and um, what we'll do is we'll do a final check we will wrap this within a CTE I'll just close the parenthesis off there and then we'll go select all from CTE where our subcategory is not equal to road bikes and discount is greater than 0.1 so we're just doing a final check here we want to say we want to check that there are no product subcategories that aren't road bikes where a discount of more than 10% has been applied so if we execute that now we're getting zero results which is exactly what we've expected so that is uh, additive case statements uh, we've met the scenario there so that can be useful when you're building perhaps uh, a string uh, so I've done it in the past where I've written um, a comma separated list of issues uh, and I use case statements to narrow it down to the specific columns that are causing a problem um, and output that through email or something like that to users to say you haven't been able to import that data these are the problem columns so it is useful um, it can be useful in certain situations really hope you have enjoyed that video do check out the other videos on my channel uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded thanks a lot for watching